It's Monday. It's March 28th. And the word of the day is paro, which means the feeling that everything you do is always somehow wrong. As if there's some obvious way forward that everybody else can see but you, each of them leaning back in their chair and calling out helpfully colder, colder, colder. Used in a sentence, my D&D character Dave the Dragon feels attacked by this relatable content about Paro. The, the, the fact that your solution to colder is, I'm going to roll for jacket, that's not helping. Okay? <laughs> I d- could have got a jacket. <laughs> hey, any series of actions that leads to Falcon Gate is the right series of actions. Okay. <laughs> you, Fair. I think. Fair. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Vladimir Putin fights for a different kind of turf. <laughs> South Carolina man proves that you can save someone from drowning on a technicality. <laughs> and Ted Cruz might be turning Japanese. He really thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow Skeptocrats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we got 224 days until Election Day. You feeling good about the midterms? No. You feeling good about American <laughs> politics right now? You think it's going to go good? You so think it's going to be great? If anybody can fuck up a sure thing, it's Donald Trump. So <laughs> okay. at least we got that going for us. That's I mean, fair. Just, yeah, yeah we're going to get to it. He's really fucking it up for Republicans. <laughs> maybe. Sure trying. Fingers crossed. In our lead story tonight, the good news is that we're on track to replace an old, worn out, almost dead Supreme Court justice with a young, healthy, and almost certainly more liberal one. Uh, the even better news is that there doesn't seem to be a goddamn thing the Republicans can do about it. No, and the even can't. better news is that we get to watch them not be able to do yeah. a goddamn thing about it. <laughs> we got to do watch that for several days, actually, last week during a confirmation hearing that seemed farcical even compared to the beer-loving rapist guys. And if you're wondering how the Republicans took this thing, um, it was racistly. <laughs> That's, that's how they oh, take things. Oh, you're going to accuse our guy of being a rapist? Well, we're going to accuse your lady of being black. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. That's not a joke. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. That's a joke and that happened. Yes, absolutely. So, Katanji Brown Jackson, she's way too classy for this idea I had, but I really wanted her to pull out a calendar to fuck with the <laughs> GOP senators with, when they were asking questions. Be like, oh, yeah, no, no, great question, Senator. I'm just going to check my uh, my records here. I got a calendar. <laughs> yeah, no, no, right here it says not being too black on a lot of these days. I was not being too black <laughs> constantly throughout my time as a judge. So, so uh, we should probably start by, by stating up front that Katanji Brown Jackson is approximately as qualified to be a Supreme Court justice as any 51-year-old constrained by the biological limits of humanhood could be. Mm-hmm. Right? Amazing. And, She's amazing. And, and that's even if you don't count being an African-American woman as a qualification, which, to be clear, you should. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know the relative merit of different clerkships or district court appointments, so instead I'm just going to say that literally everybody I know and, and trust who does know about that shit agrees that Katanji Brown-Jackson is as close to overqualified for this position as anyone has ever been. And because of that, she's expected to squeeze through confirmation by the narrowest conceivable margin on a party line vote. Yeah, maybe if we dress her up like a giant clock with the hours pushed forward, we could get the Republicans to vote for her. It seems to be the limit of what we can do these days. Yeah, and even that just accidentally. Of course, the Republicans weren't going down without a fight, but since they couldn't fight with Ketanji Brown Jackson's inevitable seat on the high court, they instead chose to fight with wokeness, QAnon <laughs> boogeymen and racist babies. And they lost. They did, all three of them. nonsense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In a series of increasingly bizarre antics, and really antics is the only word, Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee took turns posturing for the cameras in an effort to turn the hearing into a referendum on how woke they aren't. Uh, this led at one point to Marsha Blackburn asking the nominee for a seat on the fucking Supreme Court to define the word woman. And somehow, this nonsensical transphobia bait bullshit was neither the least apropos nor the most bigoted line of questioning Ms. Brown Jackson had to face. (laughs) No, it was not. Look, I know Justice Brown Jackson did a good job answering the questions, but I would have given any part of my soul to hear how she wanted to answer oh, yeah. this. <laughs> you could Ooh. see it in her eyes a little bit, how she wanted to. I was, yes, I agree with you. You ever see those videos where it's like, uh, 
Drunk guy yelling ethnic slurs doesn't realize the bouncer is actually a professional MMA fighter. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how that goes. And the drunk guy eventually goes for the punch yeah. and it goes so goddamn badly. It was like that, but Katanji Brown Jackson was using extremely tactful words instead of one punch knockouts. But yes, she wanted so badly to do those one punch so knockouts badly. that she could have done if she felt like it. Yeah, no, it's more oh. like drunk guy yelling ethnic slurs doesn't realize woman is way the fuck smarter than him. <laughs> yeah. Well, almost exactly what you said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you have relatives like my in-laws or live in a town like mine, the big buzz coming out of the four-day insult to both advice and consent was the QAnon connection. In a series of Alex Jonesian distortions, Senator Josh Howley used his time to reinforce the misleading claims he'd been making that Brown Jackson has a pattern of leniency for child pornographers. Uh, the White House rightly dubbed this line of questioning a, quote, embarrassing QAnon signaling smear. End that, that's quote. nice of them. It could have just been like, what? That could have been the statement <laughs> from the White House. But so, and, and while the slander failed to move the needle in on her confirmation, of course, it did move the needle on the amount of violent rhetoric directed against her on social media, according to an online threat monitoring company called Pura Technologies. In other words, Josh Howley intentionally linked her with a conspiracy theory adhered to by the most violent offshoot of the Republican base for no reason but to have done that. To yeah. mug for the camera while yep. he did that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, Josh Hawley doesn't just radicalize right-wing nutbags. He has also radicalized me. You should hear all the stuff that gets beat these days, folks. I'm telling you. No, you should. Like, legally speaking, you should not hear any of this. You shan't hear it, but you should. Okay, so, but when it comes to senatorial jackassery, nobody out jackasses the junior senator from the Koopa Kingdom, Ted Cruz, whose line of questioning included asking Ms. Brown Jackson at one point if he could turn into an Asian. That's not an exaggeration. Nope. <laughs> but the highlight, of course, was when he grilled the Supreme Court nominee about racist babies, specifically... He pointed out that the Georgetown Day School in Washington, D.C., where Jackson is a board member, teaches from a book by Ibram X. Kendi called The Anti-Racist Baby. And he framed the attack by asking Ms. Brown Jackson, quote, Do you agree that babies are racist? End quote. That was followed by a sigh so loud and prominent and pregnant with meaning <laughs> that it literally made its way into the congressional record. <laughs> it says bracket sigh bracket, which, which by the way, was followed by seven full seconds of silence. Amazing. Which was then followed by a way more reasonable answer than Ted Cruz deserved. Yeah. Hey, no, can I just have the steno read that back to me just now? Do you agree that babies are racist? Really loud sigh of disgust? Is that what it says? Sir? <laughs> cool. Yeah, that is what it says. Cool. Got it. I was just making sure we had that on the record. Cool, cool. And to answer your question, Mr. Cruz, uh, I find myself ensnared in your genius, unrejectable premise. What will I ever do? I don't... Uh, you're very intelligent. That was the internal monologue right before she was about to knock him out, punch him in the face or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. But then she gave a, a really great real answer. She Destroyed actually did. So, now, it, it's worth noting, by the way, that A, the book doesn't claim that babies are fucking racist, and B... No, it doesn't. In the wake of Cruz's attack, that book skyrocketed to first place on the Amazon bestseller list. Um, I should also so point out that Kataji Brown Jackson is way smarter than Ted Cruz. And like, admittedly, Ted Cruz, as much as I hate him, I'll admit he is smart. He's a, but, he's a very intelligent guy. Right, but he's he, no he Ketanji Brown Jackson. Yeah. Right, so she actually jujitsu his whole line of questioning by pointing out that the Georgetown Day School was originally created because D.C.'s schools were segregated by law and some forward-thinking citizens wanted a private school where that wasn't the case. So... Yes, the school was literally founded on wokeness and in a way that every reasonable person agrees was needed. And even the <laughs> right. nonsense attack that Ted Cruz pulled out of his fucking hat is further proof that every institution in America was formed by the nation's bigotry, which is the point that he's trying to argue against. Yeah. Honestly, the fact that Ted Cruz disagreed with a kid's book that lays out the basics of anti-racism on the congressional record <laughs> is pretty awesome. It's fantastic. It's he might as well have tried mwah. to count to 10 and failed. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is very important extra little detail here. Ted Cruz almost missed the first day of the hearings and possibly his chance to throw out that amazing genius trap question. Because he had a flight delay at Bozeman Airport in Montana. 
And when that delay happened, he got all angry and he started yelling at the ticket counter and somebody fucking caught this on video and put it on Reddit. He actually used the phrase, do you know who I am while yelling like fucking Karen at this ticket counter? They had to call the cops. And the best part, they did not know who he was. Yeah, (laughs) Montana. Fuck yeah, Montana. Were you in Menudo? <laughs> Amazing so, so, job by uh, well, Montana. Okay, but when you consider how little urine his food and beverages had in them, I don't know that it's a good thing they didn't know who he was, <laughs> but it was an embarrassing thing. I don't know how little urine f- went. Well, that's true. Food, yeah. That's true. That's an unknown variable. So, yeah. Unlike the underqualified Handmaid's Tale villain and the drunken rapist the Republicans most recently added to the court, nobody could seem to find any legitimate thing to take issue with in Katanji Brown Jackson's record. In fact, their retreat from her judicial philosophy and qualifications were a pretty strong indicator of just how impeccable those really are. They gave up on derailing her before they ever got there and just used their time to bolster their bigotry cred with the Republican base. And the very fact that one needs bigotry cred to impress the Republican base is yet another reminder of how important and exciting it is to be adding a woman of color to the nation's highest court. Right. And And to vote in the midterms. Yep. Uh (laughs) And how important it is for your uncle not to go to the hospital when he gets COVID. Remember, kids, (laughs) doing your own research means making your own ventilator. No, that's true. It does. (laughs) Are you going to just believe big oxygen? No. 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 And while your hypothetical uncle struggles to catch his breath, I suppose we can pause for a quick word from this week's first sponsor, Policy Genius. Vroomy, vroom, vroom. See, I'm, I'm worried about vroomy. That seems like it could be a problem. Oh, okay. Uh, how about this? Chicago. doll. De- de- definitely not there yet. No, no. Hey, guys. What are you doing? So my home and auto insurance are up for renewal. So I'm having Eli pretend to be my home and my car so I can get the best rate. Oh, okay. So the last sound was a door opening? A door opening, yes. Keith, doll. If, if, if you want to get the best rates on home and auto insurance, why don't you just try Policy Genius? What's Policy Genius? Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Well, how does that work? Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com and answer a few questions. Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your search and help you understand your options. The Policy Genius team can look for ways that you can save money, and if they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free. Customers who bundled their home and auto policies with Policy Genius saved an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying. Wow, that's a lot of moolah. It sure is. Plus, the Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. All right, no, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Head to PolicyGenius.com to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see how much you could save. All right, Eli, I guess I don't need you to be in my house anymore. Mm, probably for the best. The basement has some leaks if you catch my drift. Just go to a doctor, dude. Horrible. No. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Comrade Culture News. Ben Shapiro and your racist uncle who we hope dies of COVID have a new ally in the war against cancel culture this week. Psychopathic tyrant Vladimir Putin. Oh. And and you know what they say? If you're on the same side of history as Vladimir Putin... It's probably a coincidence in your nailing. You're, you're, you're nailing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> they do say that. Although I think my shirtless pick on a horse would have crushed it on Tinder. I you agree. were being an asshole about it. I think that would have been great. I agree. And, and and the fact that he and I use the same table straps and giant laser to slowly bifurcate our enemies is probably just like we both have an eye for value kind of a thing. I don't <laughs> exactly <think> quality. <laughs> yeah. Speaking from. The weird nuclear bunker he's still pretending is an office building. <laughs> Nobody be best. within 300 yards of me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Bunker Boy 2. I you, fucking love it. You have fucking, you have like spies destroying democracy all over the world and no one can put up a, a reasonable looking wall for you, Mike? Get a green screen, man. You can put anything you want. You could be on a beach. <laughs> I am not a kid. I am here. I am not the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So while speaking from that particular Zoom screen, the first example of cancel culture gone wild that Putin used was beloved children's author who literally just had to shut the fuck up and spend her billion dollars, J.K. Rowling. Uh, Rowling has come under fire the last few years for being a giant transphobe, which is surprising since the scientific training she received as a coffee shop waitress who had a truckload of money backed into her open mouth covered <laughs> genetics and gender studies extensively. Gender studies too. Yeah. Right. No, she okay. got both. Uh, it was right after she shadowed the person. She then did yeah, four-year programs in both. Yeah. yeah. So Vladdy Baby said that Western elites had, quote, canceled the author J.K. Rowling because she, quote, did not please fans of so-called gender freedoms, end quote. Well, to be fair, she'd been practicing not pleasing fans since at least 2016. She's gotten good at it. <laughs> yeah, she sure has. <laughs> uh, but don't worry. Putin didn't manage to hold on to the definition of a word cancel for long because he then added that Japan, quote, cynically decided to cancel the fact that the United States dropped nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. What? I wonder who's getting credit for that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so what the fuck point are you what? making, Vlad? Are you still pissed at the Mongolians? Is that what this is about? <laughs> also, cynically decided to cancel? Yeah. Well, how does the word cynically <laughs> apply very, there also? Very strange quote. But of course... All this was leading up to what every conversation about cancel culture ever has been or ever will be. That the worst canceling was happening to the person bitching about it. Yep. That's right. America is trying to cancel Russia just because they bombed one little maternity ward. Yeah, no. Putin is not going to be welcome to perform at the Comedy Cellar for at least a few <laughs> weeks. He is canceled. Yeah, it, it, is his point that it's gotten to where real war is almost as bad as culture war? What's... <laughs> <laughs> but do you know who else canceled people? That's right, the Nazis. The Nazis, Nazis. yeah. Mm -hmm. Quote from Vladimir Putin. Quote, the names of Tchaikovsky, Shostakovich, and Rachmaninoff are being removed from the playbills. Citation needed. Russian writers and their books are being banned. The last are time they? such a mass campaign to destroy objectionable literature was carried out was by the Nazis in Germany almost 90 years ago. End quote. <laughs> One last thing about this story. Shortly after this speech aired, Russian TV followed it up with a clip of none other than Fox News' own Tucker Carlson saying on his show, quote, we have a constitutional right to a free press, but we don't have it. And that is not Russian propaganda End quote. <laughs> on actual Russian <laughs> state propaganda. TV. You know who's definitely not Russian propaganda? People who say I'm not Russian propaganda. <laughs> During That's, their Russian propaganda. It's not suspect though. at all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Next up in headlines, we have some very important news about the Thomas family, specifically Ginny Thomas, the conservative activist, and her husband Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court Justice. So first and most importantly, Clarence Thomas did not die of COVID. Oh. He did not die of COVID. He didn't die of any of the stuff on my vision board. I had a bunch of scenarios. He was hospitalized last week. He didn't die. Trigger warning. Yeah. Well, we had fireworks. We had a marching band with a drum line. We had a mm -hmm. fucking crepe station. It's a big letdown. <laughs> it's a very big letdown. But as a small consolation, we got to learn about a series of text messages between Ginny Thomas and Donald Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, that happened right after Biden won in 2020. They mostly talked about overturning the results of a democratic presidential election mm -hmm. yeah. so you know sedition also just for the record francois crepes were delicious we were just hoping we could have had them in celebration rather than more. <laughs> guys I, I keep telling you if he dies of covid that would mean he can't be eaten alive by a vat of hungry slugs so this is not all bad news right That's sure fair. okay yeah, yeah. silver lining good so if you had a different name in your head for trump's chief of staff that's because he had four of them in four years. Mark Meadows was the latest or, one. Or you could you could even argue that he had zero of them. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and following the 2020 election, he was definitely Mark Meadows. He was definitely in contact with a bunch of crazy people trying to stage a very literal coup. So he got subpoenaed by the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack. And he turned over 2,320 text messages. And then right after giving up all that information... Mark Meadows stopped cooperating then. And <laughs> that uh, that's nothing. You right. already helped <laughs> our team. You helped the other team. It's, it's done. He's the Fredo Corleone of the Republican Party at this point. <laughs> yep. 
And that makes Ginny Thomas the person who asked Fredo Corleone to save the country. So the first text out of the 29 between the two of them was on November 10th, 2020, and it said, help this great president stand firm, Mark, three exclamations. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist capitalized of our history. Capitalized. Yeah, Honestly, history, history, and <laughs> I just forget. You know who else capitalizes nouns? Nazis. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, the most terrifying revelations of the January 6th commission have been that these people really are that stupid. right? Like, I guess I just always suspected that they were villains playing to the crowd, but nope. They shouldn't be allowed near a lighter levels of idiots. <laughs> Okay, so, well, while I can't take issue with the claim that Ginny Thomas is too stupid to be trusted with an open flame, I don't take that as evidence that she actually believes the big lie, right? Like, this is this is possibly just a way of signaling that she'd be in Trump's corner post-insurrection, right? Like, I, I can't honestly say if believing the insurrection could work and believing the stolen election claim are different levels of stupid, but they are different levels of evil, so I'm not going to yeah. give her the benefit of the doubt there. No, it feels just like hedgy. It's hedging. It's yeah. hedging stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, the attempted sedition, that's normally terrifying, but this particular attempt at sedition by Ginny Thomas was so inept and panicky and sad <laughs> that it was more entertainment than anything else, for me anyway. For example, she was certain that the perfect person to lead the charge mm -hmm. was Sidney Powell. <laughs> she highly recommended Sidney Powell to Mark Meadows. And apparently Meadows and Trump got on board with that. And, you know, Sidney Powell did what Sidney Powell did. Yep. And from there, it devolved into sending links from your fucking friend who thinks the Fed is a Ponzi scheme. That's pretty much what Ginny Domus did after this. She sent a YouTube video called... Trump sting with CIA director Steve Pachenik, the biggest election story in history, QFS blockchain. <laughs> that was the title of the video. Yep. This, <laughs> this, yeah. This, so stupid. <laughs> this, this is about how Trump had ingeniously watermarked a bunch of mail-in ballots to track the fraud that he knew was going to happen. What? He did not. It's nope. none of that. None of that title Why? I just said is true. Nothing, yeah. n not one word of it. I mean, to be fair, if Clarence wanted to marry someone who wasn't going to intellectually dwarf him, Ginny was his option. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard about an Australian lady that married a bridge, but yeah, it was it was either, it was one of those two <laughs> things that that bridge was taken. So. Yeah. Build a bridge out of her. Yeah. Also, Steve Pachenik is a crazy person who's a regular on InfoWars. Really? He also was not the CIA director. He ever. sure wasn't. No. Also, QFS stands for Quantum Financial System, which is fictional. Mm -hmm. okay. That's about a global financial reset uh, with some kind of like Bitcoin jubilee uh, and the end of national currency that like, you know, fringe on the flag people talk about. That sounds like a good idea. Not a thing. It's not a thing. And this video claimed that the watermarks were quantum somehow they were quantum what? watermarks and and possibly recorded on the quantum blockchain also a fictional thing that does not exist quantum computing is a real thing but it's relatively new and still mostly theoretical but if we did perfect quantum computing it would fuck up the whole blockchain idea because an advanced quantum computer would have the computing power to very easily break the encryption system of the blockchain. Mm -hmm, yeah. The whole thing is dumb nonsense. Nothing of it. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that any currency that can be rendered useless by doing a hard enough math problem, probably <laughs> not the <laughs> currency of the future. Well, any currency that has to advertise also isn't the currency of the future, okay? Uh, <laughs> I don't see any ads for money now that I Get your dollars! <laughs> Only a nickel! Yeah, no, they don't have that. Oh, no! Money died with Mr. <laughs> Peanut! Go out and get some! So, at some point, Mark Meadows clearly checked out and started responding to all these texts with, like, one or two words, just that he technically didn't ignore the spouse of a Supreme Court justice. Lots of like, wow, no way. Or like, or sometimes just nothing for Shocked a long stretch face, in response. Yeah. yeah. And then Ginny Thomas started getting extra panicky in late November when even a bunch of Republicans had started admitting that Biden very clearly won. 
And on November 24th, she accused Meadows of, quote, caving to the elites. And so the two of them started arguing over text. But then out of nowhere, mid argument, they completely stopped communicating until January 10th. Weird. The House committee got nothing between Thomas and Meadows during that crazy weird gap. Huh. It seemed like they were right in the middle of a fight, but then they said nothing no, until I get like it. a few days after the uh, insurrection. No, I get it. His last conversation was a fight, so you're just waiting for the other person to restart it <laughs> about treason. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah. You know how it is. <laughs> it's an awkward moment, yeah. Who, who goes first, right? It's a tough one. And just a quick little tangent before we wrap it up. Ginny and Clarence Thomas are a mixed-race couple. Hey, um, and, Hey, no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. That's not the whole tangent. <laughs> okay. That's not the whole tangent. I'm not Good. just saying that they're a mixed race couple. End of story. We're done. So I just far, want to point that out. Saying, <laughs> no, this, oh, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting okay. to it. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to it. This relates to another ridiculous news item. They're a mixed race couple. He, that would, man, no, I, 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 let I me finish. Push through. I have to, you have to, I have sent rest of sentence. They're a mixed race couple that would not be legal to get married in plenty of red states if it was up to GOP Senator Mike Braun as of this month in 2022. Ooh, yep. During a press conference last week, he said interracial marriage is, you know, just like abortion and marijuana laws. It should be state by state decided that way locally. Then he tried to walk that back and say he misunderstood the question that led to him saying that, which is a very obvious lie. During the conference in question, Braun mentioned abortion and marijuana and said they should be decided state by state. And then a reporter asked him, would the same thing apply to Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court case that legalized interracial marriage? And he said, yes, yes, it would. Then another reporter was like, dude, seriously, do you want to try that again? Do you want to take one more <laughs> swing at that? And again, Braun said, yes, no, that is what I meant. I really meant that. He thinks the decision about Ginny being... Fucking blood trader is a federalism thing. And the same goes for other prominent fans of states' rights, like, for example, Clarence Thomas, like Clarence yep. Thomas of the Federalist Society. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe they missed a tumor at the hospital. We get, right. Uh, maybe. Maybe he's got a really big fucking tumor in his face. I don't know. Or, or uh, uh, maybe they missed a vat of slugs. They, well, <laughs> fingers crossed, Noah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> And while I fight with Heath about the fact that he responds to my text messages the same way Mark Meadows responds to Jimmy <laughs> Thomas, we're going to toss things over to our next sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And then I woke up. And my bed was covered in mushrooms. Yeah, that sounds really tough, man. It was very tough. It was tough. It was terrifying. Hey, guys. What are you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. He was just telling me about the wool dasher. <laughs> the, the, the mascot that the, he has thank an you. issue with. Again? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I want to be a good friend, but it feels like every conversation we have these days is about the e WDM, easy? you know? Okay, did I tell you about the time I woke up in the body of a Victorian little girl? I yes. was I was yes. her. Yes, man, you told us. I had to solve my own murder. I know, I know. You know, Eli, it's all well and good to want to be a supportive friend, but if you've got someone in your life who's using you to work through serious pain, you should really recommend them to a licensed professional therapist. I know, I know, but, you know, therapists don't grow on trees. Okay, you know who did grow on a tree? The wool dasher. The, 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 yeah, yes, yes. Yes. Well, the, the Eli, why don't you just try BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Wait, chat sessions? So instead of texting me, they could be texting a licensed professional therapist? That's right. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and listeners get 10% off on their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, Noah. I'll give it a try. He turned a horse into a lady, and I fell in love with her. You told us, man. You told us. She's wonderful. <laughs> And we're back next up in headlines in sycophantasy news. Donald Trump is too dumb to burn out and too arrogant to fade away, which means that every step <laughs> of the protracted process of his shrinking political relevance is playing out publicly. And it's fucking glorious. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to say it, it makes the Trump administration worth it because 
It isn't an end to bigotry, a cure for cancer, and a blowjob fountain, but it has been really fucking fun to watch him make increasingly empty threats without any seeming awareness of how empty they are. And nowhere is that more visible than the dwindling poll numbers of the various politicians he's recruited to run against his, like, disloyal Republicans who refuse to overturn democracy or pointed out that armed deadly insurrections are bad no matter how hopeless they are. Yeah, he's the political equivalent of your drug dealer calling your pickup a party and inviting the guy who hangs out in front of 7-Eleven all day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that social media thing is going good, right? Right, Donald? Truth social? <laughs> Making friends like MySpace Tom over yeah. there, right? You got like a yeah. requirement when you sign up. You got like a million friends. Oh, so That's awesome. As, as you well, guys not know, quite I... a million, but like some. Right. <laughs> but yeah, as, as you guys know, I originally planned on doing a follow up uh, on the truth social thing for, for this week's story. I was going to sign up and, and do like an investigative report. Were you, you able to do that? You can only get it on iPhone. It's still not available on Android. <laughs> 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 Haven't quite figured out the other There's, there's no the, web the, version. The, the, the Clandroid Freedom phone doesn't have it? You can't get it on Clandroid, no. So Trump's pettiness was thrust into the spotlight on Wednesday when he pulled his endorsement from Alabama Republican Senate hopeful Mo Brooks, who made the mistake of urging his supporters to look forward rather than endlessly relitigating the 2020 election, and also highlighted how useless a Trump endorsement had become by dropping from a double-digit lead to third place in the primary polls. But, of course, in an effort to avoid admitting that the real reason was because I'm making me look bad, Trump accused Brooks of being woke— uh, and by woke, he means telling people to put the 2020 election behind them. Sorry, he called Mo Brooks too woke? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mo, Mo Brooks, who, for example, voted against making Juneteenth a holiday. That's One the guy. of 14 congressmen who voted against that. He is too woke. Yep. Yeah. Hey, that guy. Donnie, heads up. Nobody named Mo is too woke. Not a single... <laughs> Not a single one, bud. <laughs> I, think, I think there is. But but nowhere is the tour of Trump publicly realizing that his penis doesn't work anymore over and over again more visible than in my home state of Georgia. Uh, this is the state, after all, where Trump seems to have committed his most egregious felonies while attempting to overturn the election, and thus is the location of some of his archest of nemeses, notably self-appointed Governor Brian Kemp, who, after overseeing his own gubernatorial election as the Secretary of State at the time, decided that election integrity mattered now, uh, or, or at least decided that <laughs> impossible, stupid, felonious gestures that wouldn't accomplish anything weren't worth the risk, uh, and refused to find enough votes for Trump to carry the state. Also included in that list, of course, is Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, who is also up for re-election. And, and while polling shows his hand-picked primary rivals getting utterly crushed by the incumbents, Trump still showed up for a rally in the state over the weekend to wave his flaccid penis at a county fair tribute band-sized audience <laughs> and assure them that it was probably hard enough to at least get started. <laughs> I could do a splint. You got? Do you have like a popsicle stick? I could. You got a tie. You got to like, squish tie? it in there like a potato <laughs> factory, America. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. So yeah, the latest stop on what the media is calling Trump's revenge tour took place in a small town in northern Georgia called Commerce. He was there in support of former senator and current gubernatorial hopeful David Perdue, who's currently getting his ass handed to him by Kemp in the polls, uh, as well as Congressman Jody Heiss, who's looking to unseat Raffensperger. Both candidates are trailing in polls by double digits two months from the primary, so after reporters at the scene marveled on Twitter about how small and sedate the crowd was, Trump came and threatened to take all his voters and go home, predicting that if Kemp and Raffensperger win the primaries, Trump supporters will boycott the election. Yes, oh, baby! No, don't do that. Yes, don't yes. Pretty good news, especially when you consider that Stacey Abrams came within a percent and a half of beating Kemp last time, and that time he was cheating. <laughs> right. You gotta love when the bad guy's a fucking idiot. Right. Like, Trump never even wins in 2016 without Jill Stein. And now he's made himself into the evil Republican version of Jill Stein. This right. is fucking great. Yeah. Guys, I feel like we need to start a right-wing version of the Skeptocrat where we just say the opposite of what we think to help Donnie out, right? It's just like, <laughs> no, stand strong. I'm not that confident. Lion anyway, party. But the key here is that the only thing more fun to watch than Trump self-destructing is him bringing the ship down around him to the best of his ability while he does. I mean, consider that he's putting pretty much zero effort into rallying anybody to vote against any Democrat. Democrats. And I think we can all agree that Trump is such a power hungry fuck that even if the only power he has left is to sabotage the party, he's going to damn well use it. 
And given that he's been unable to move the needle in the fucking Idaho governor's race, I feel like that's about all that's left in his bag. (laughs) And in Lifesaver news, our next story is about someone getting shot. But before you tense your shoulders in terror, it's a white guy getting shot by another white guy and deserving it. So sit back and relax as I spin you the yarn of 29-year-old Nathan Drew Morgan, who was shot to death because he wouldn't stop trying to murder the 74-year-old man and his (laughs) wife who were actively rescuing him from drowning. (laughs) This story is amazing. He died of acute libertarianism. It's good good times. You gotta love that. When are we going to do something to address this white-on-white violence? Finally, someone brave enough to say it. (laughs) So according to Morgan's female companion on the water, who was not dating him because her mom might see the article, (laughs) she and Morgan were supposed to spend the day jet skiing. But he arrived to their meeting visibly drunk and high, forcing her to drive the rest of the way to the water. Once there, he became abusive mid jet ski and both toppled into the water and lost control of their jet ski. Oh, I'm feeling better and better about laughing at this man's death. Eli, thanks for these details. Yep. Yep. I was already feeling pretty great, but yes, even (laughs) better. Luckily for them, 74 year old John Dotson and his wife were nearby on their pontoon boat and seeing that two people were in trouble, hauled them both aboard. At which point, Morgan physically attacked Dodson and his wife in an attempt to gain control of the boat so he could retrieve his jet ski. Look at me. I am the captain now. Relax over there. Stop yelling Ragnar Daniskill. That book sucks. I literally saved your life just now. You're the worst. Right. So at this point, Morgan's companion attempted to de-escalate the situation by pushing Morgan off the boat into the water. Fantastic. At which point... Dotson and his wife ill-advisedly rescued him again, and he attempted to strangle them to death again. (laughs) Murder me once, shame on me. (laughs) (laughs) So luckily, at this point, Dotson had gotten the message that God clearly had intended for this guy to die, and so he (laughs) shot him in the chest and killed him. And while there was initially a murder investigation launched, charges have since been dropped as every single person in the universe agrees this dude is the dictionary definition of having it coming. (laughs) Okay, he was yelling about maritime law at the time of the drowning, though. That's kind of funny, right? Like, come on. Sovereign citizen. Exactly. Moral of the story, and if I've said this once, I've said it a thousand times, be careful who you rescue. Sometimes nature is healing itself. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Got to Eli on the side of the boat holding the lifesaver above his head. Quit thrashing around and summarize your feelings about trans women and sports, <laughs> goddammit. It's not hard. It's not hard. No, it should, it should well, be. Well, now you're under. Name three Congress people. <laughs> Too slow. All right, see you later. And finally tonight, if you're trying to keep up with the news, you're hearing about war and refugee crisis and a pandemic and bigot billionaires doing stuff and bigots with all the other amounts of money doing stuff. And actually, speaking of money, you're, you're reading about our money's on fire and polar bears are on fire and... Arguably the most supremely qualified Supreme Court nominee in American history is getting grilled about fictional babies yelling ethnic slurs. It's a lot. It's a lot when you read the news. So, okay, sorry, I got worked up too. In order to mix it up a little bit and calm us all down, we're going to close it out with a little bit of good news. In a fun moment of unexpected solidarity, the intelligence community and the anarchist hacker community took a pause on their ongoing feud so they could both spend more time fucking with Vladimir Putin for being an evil person. Nice. Oh, they also refused to buy the new Harry Potter game? <laughs> so, wait, like, of all the underestimations Putin made going into this invasion, perhaps the biggest was his assumption that we in the West were too busy hating each other to like unify in our hate for him too. But like... <laughs> No, Our well, hate out. is bottomless, dude. Yeah. Hate yeah. is to Americans <laughs> as tenacity is to Ukrainians. It's our fucking superpower, okay? Ukrainians so. are amazing, by they the really way. They really are. Amazing. So, a big part of Putin's policy at home during the invasion of Ukraine is preventing the people of Russia from seeing international media coverage that explains, you know, how the concept of bad guy works, because mm-hmm. that would be bad for Putin. That includes a domestic propaganda campaign and Russian journalists being threatened with jail or even worse if they use the word war to describe the warring that's happening. The war, yeah. (laughs) In response, 
the hacktivist collective known as Anonymous figured out how to hijack printers all over Russia and print out anti-propaganda information, giving real news from outside the reach of the Kremlin. They're also printing instructions on how to install Tor, which is a piece of free open source software that can theoretically make your online communication more anonymous, asterisk. They've been doing this for over a week now, and they've likely printed out over a million copies of their anti-propaganda kit. And as much as I do not like the idea of random computer nerds very easily taking over computer stuff with no transparency or oversight, this feels like a good version of that, which I yeah. normally don't like. All over Russia, printers are firing up out of nowhere, and Putin loyalists are doing side tackles of printers from across the office trying to, like, dive and grab stuff. I just, I'm picturing a way less self-aware version of that scene from Office Space now, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know if we have time for a Eli's a crazy person break, but I just want to throw this out there. Tor was created by the CIA, nope. and they only pretend it's anonymous. No, that's not okay. I, okay, I'm not sure if that's true, but I wouldn't just like assume you're definitely anonymous no matter what if you put Tor. You're on not, computer. but yeah, yeah. That's also because the CIA so created just it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right past that, that's going to bring us to the latest counterintelligence operation by the FBI. They decided to ramp up their recruiting here in the U.S., hoping to get Russian government people to help out with information. And they're doing it with location-based Facebook ads. So if a Russian diplomat, for example, they're in Washington, D.C., and they happen to be walking down the street next to the Russian embassy, perhaps on their way to work, their Facebook feed, if they took their phone out, might at that point have an ad in both English and Russian that shows Putin badgering Sergei Narishkin, the head of the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service. And the ad says, speak plainly, we are ready to listen. Mm -hmm. And that's a super inside baseball callback to Putin's exact words when he was badgering that guy during a recent televised meeting. But anyone in the Russian government would totally get that joke and maybe become a defector. We don't know. The ad also says, please come visit us at the FBI in person. We're right down the street. Come check us out. It should totally add, bonus, we don't pay in rubles. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought my ads for That's a, a Pokeball-shaped grinder were invasive. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm generally not a big fan of secret government spy stuff either. Okay, actually, sometimes I am. You know, like British intelligence beating Nazis, that was great. Some of but the James Bond movies are great. Yeah, and the movies, there's cool movies about it, exactly. But we're definitely doing some bad stuff, too, especially when there's no transparency and kind of by definition, sometimes there's no transparency. But for this operation with the Facebook ads, it's completely not secret. It's actually the exact opposite. And that's part of the point. It might get some Russian embassy people to help the FBI. But even if that never happens, the Russian counterintelligence team is going crazy trying to prevent this ad thing from working. And they were already going crazy dealing with a bunch of extra work because of, you know, the war that they're doing. So now every single time a Russian diplomat wants to get a Starbucks near an FBI field office in Washington, D.C., there's a series of like 19 spies and spy spies and spy spy spies mm -hmm. all walking down the street with like newspapers in a weird line diving behind bushes and stuff. So... That's fun, right? Like, good distraction. Either way, we're fucking with Russian counterintelligence. I like Comrade, it. Comrade, I worry about your time on social media. Perhaps try TikTok. Our Chinese <laughs> friends run that yeah. one. <laughs> so, so now all we need is for the FBI or Anonymous to somehow fuck with the lead guy's assignment so that he thinks he's tailing the rear guy. That'll do it, yeah. Right, and their other spies will just walk around the block until they all starve to death. It'll be awesome. That's true. <laughs> and on that note... We're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new donors who will have their genitals or some sort of other compliment that will happen next time around. They and will have their not. genitals no matter what. They'll have their <laughs> genitals. Well, Most maybe okay. if they're yeah, assuming just... some tragic thing doesn't happen where they lose all of their genital area. If you that. tragically lose your genitals between <laughs> this and the next skeptocrat, reach out Let to us. Let us know. We don't want to put out a yeah. weird compliment that's going to make it worse. But we'll compliment whatever you want. Uh, whatever you are feeling, we'll throw out a compliment. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, 
If you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Drafts on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Do you remember the specifics that you said? Do you remember exactly what you said? Just to say it back to me now. What's fun. happening? What's happening in this bit? Heath, Heath, what's happening in this bit? I'm going to beep it. Or I'm just so lost. <laughs> I got but, scared. All I try to do is say violent shit on the show and you reverse, you reverse <laughs> psychology me. <laughs> I'm a toddler cleaning his room frantically, but not quite sure why. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.